Now, this is one of those scenes that when it got cut, you're like, I, I guess I could see why. But it, uh, it does, does kind of help with uh, what those two get up to ultimately. You're taller than what? Than me? This is another one of those scenes where I was like, I was sure this was just an invention from the movie. And it's like, no, this happens in the book too, almost exactly. Everyone knows I'm the tall one, you're the short one. <laughs> Does it just make him taller or does it make him taller and stronger? I think it just makes him taller. Which is still... Bigger, you know. harder, faster, stronger. I have fear the faster, baby. No! Wait, what? What? You know the design of the castle? What, it, what's that, like, from? Is it Do the books line it up or lay it yeah. out pretty well? Yeah, yeah, there's a pretty detailed description of Helm's cool. Keep. Yes. And it's pretty accurate from what I remember. Yes, it is. Unbelievable that scenes like this were cut out of the theatrical. This was cut from the theatrical? Yeah, this yeah, is an extended version. Yeah, none of this yeah. stuff was in it. Yeah, this, yeah. this scene and Faramir talking about the corpse when they bumps into Sam and Frodo, those were both cut. Those were extended yeah. sequences. I know, it's to... crazy, isn't it? You yeah, forget which yeah, ones like, were in the theatrical. Form is not in the theatrical. Well, I only ever saw the Fellowship theatrical. I never watched the other two. I'll never go into because they're inferior. I still they remember watching inferior. the extenders for the first time being fucking blown away. I was like, Hello? It's like literally new content. Holy shit. It's so fucking good these came out with way they did. Because if they were coming out today, it probably would be like a, if they were successful, a need to be like, Lord of the Rings, what if? What if they did kill Gollum here? And then what happens next? So there's a multiverse and Thanos is involved and stuff. Is it George R. R. Martin who hates the what if stuff and fan fictions that splinter off from the main storylines? Yeah, he does. Well, George R. R. Well, R. Martin least... hate, hates Lord of the Rings as well. Well, like, George R. 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 Martin just hates end. people who actually make stories. So yeah. he's very bitter. <laughs> oh, oh, finish them. oh, get fucked, George. Come on our podcast, please. Finish the book, George. Whatever book you're working on, I, I don't know what it's called. A, a, a triptych of a blue and asparagus or whatever it's called. I don't know. Hold of you to assume that he's worked on a book in the past 13 years. Yeah. 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 That was like my original joke. Yeah. You made it a different one. The same vibe. But... Oh my goodness. It's... Like, man, I understand that you got to cut stuff because you got to get it to a certain runtime for theaters, but like, fuck, man. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Imagine watching that scene, but without the context for their relationship at that point, you know? I guess you could say most people did, as in, like, most people don't... Most people would have, you know, yeah. yeah. I imagine that more people have seen the theatrical than the extended. There almost was, uh... Arwen fighting Gion... at Helm. Didn't they have, um... Yeah, I'm so glad yeah. they did away with it. Yep. And I assume that has nothing to do with the books. That's a... That would have been an invention of the film. Yeah, that was not Yeah, the very much so. Nonsense. Arwen's not in the books. She's spoken about. Look at them. They're frightened. You can see it in their eyes. Legolas being a bit of a downer, though. This is where it deviates from the books a little bit, because in the book, they're actually quite well prepared at Helm's Deep. They actually have a pretty sizable force there. It's not just like a bunch of old men and boys. They expected something like this to happen. Imagine being one of these guys looking at Look this Look at all the helmets like they made. Of course, the elves were never supposed to be here, but... <laughs> oh, you can see... That like comedy a shot, it's great. Yeah, like, in the, in the books, the, the elves' part in this whole war is very much off-screen. Like, there's multiple battles that take place around Lothlorien and stuff, but, like, it's not actually shown. I kind of get why they wanted to actually Galadriel show them in action things. here. Yeah, Galadriel was, was just... Yeah, she was just cleaning up, you know, she didn't want to... Well, throughout the books, there's tons of battles going in other places that I would have... Alright, what do you guys John, think so about the, the pacing juxtaposition of taking us to the, the end in the middle of Helm's Deep? Yeah, no, I'm fine with that. You need it. Oh, it, yeah. it. It lets you breathe. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah breathe. you need you need that break. Otherwise, it would just become exhausted. Icing is a it's a challenging. It's a it's a fine art. I feel like there's no clear guidebook on on what is good or bad pacing, but it does feel like we need a bit of a breather after all of that. It's like the rising tension, then all of the action actually playing out, and then all right, let's slow down a little bit. We'll be back there in a you know. It won't we'll be, be back. Don't back you worry. There. It's the kind of thing talented people know. There's no plan. There's no way to teach timing oh yeah i no, feel like it's uh, really it's hard to, to yeah it's like comedic timing how do you teach that tone and pacing yeah, are really just, difficult to teach could you imagine if if like ryan johnson or taika waititi or something had directed this trilogy could you just imagine that the absolute i don't like to imagine that that. why would you make me imagine that yeah. i'm just thinking like like what if you cut your dick off it would be the pervasive idea of we we don't give them exactly what they want you know we we gotta we gotta subvert those expectations all right you wanted to see a big 
big epic battle? I don't know about that. Well, actually, what if we just don't do that? What if just a stray arrow kills Aragorn? What if a stray arrow kills <laughs> Helm's Deep? There he is, there. Go. Random oh. chant. They don't uh, go to Osgiliath in the books, right? No, they don't. Nope. Hence the line, like, from Sam, obviously. By all rights, we shouldn't even be here. I don't know if it was the studio that pushed for that scene and Peter Jackson was against it and that was, like, his way of, like, just, you know, pointing out the fact that it was stupid. Well, I mean, what are you guys saying? Because I quite like their, uh, excursion I think it works. to Osgiliath. I do. I, I, really I, like think it. You got, I think you got enough with Faramir where they were, like, because they were kind of on the borders of Mordor, um, and you had the scenes with Gollum, like, all that stuff was in the books. I don't think it was necessary to take them all the way back to Osgiliath and then turn all Faramir the way back. Well, go. I, I think it makes sense that Faramir would want to go. And I, I think it, it, it does, way. but like, in the books, it's more definite. Like, he recognizes, like, he has to let them go. And he yep. makes that conscious decision to let them go, whereas Boromir couldn't have. And I think that's what separates. I thought that's the two what they were brothers. doing, though. Is he, the, does, he, he does. does it yeah, because like he does. He does eventually, but like it takes quite a lot to to get him to that point. But doesn't he? Is that not arguably better that at first he's like the ring goes to Gondor? Of course, that's the decision to make. And then he sees what he sees in Osgiliath, and he's like, okay, maybe not actually. Especially with the deleted it's, scene that we've oh, already Faramir seen. Faramir is a lot it's different. It's a tricky one because yeah, because yeah, he's a yeah. lot different in the book, like a lot. The book fans primarily hate Faramir in the movies. Well, they can oh. suck it. <laughs> Yeah, well, they, 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 they're, they're, great. He's like a student of Gandalf. The books to me are superior, but I love the movies and I love what they did. Plus, I'm maybe it's good that we got Osgiliath here because in Return of the King, of course, we'll see it later. Oh, yeah, this definitely helps us understand how lost Osgiliath is. Uh, yes. Entering yeah. I mean, here, knowing like, that Gondor's yeah, got this whole shit going on. Yeah. I mean, Osgiliath has been Reminder a ruin what doing for, all the time. for decades by this point. Well, yeah, yes. but look, remember, the last time we saw it was in a flashback where they'd won it. It was... It was yeah. theirs. So now seeing this, it's like, oh shit, what's going on here? And it's like, yeah, Mordor is basically taking the fuck over. It also, you know, balances the one victory that we're going to see later. Sorry, spoilers, everyone. Uh, with <laughs> a spoilers? No. crushing defeat. Uh, you know what? I'm assuming most people have seen it. If you haven't, well, you know, for a fact, there will be that one guy who's like, I never watched the Rings. I've watched many reviews of it, <laughs> yeah. and many people's coverage, but I just, uh, I, don't know. <laughs> just uh, I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I was, I was, I was waiting for the right time yeah. to watch it. They say a dark terror dwells in the passes above me in Morgul. We cannot go that way. But the thing is, as well, like, what he's proposing is literally the only way you can get into Mordor without being Allegedly. discovered. Probably not the only, but one of the ways that. No, work. Sauron finished the wall. There's only a couple ways. <laughs> I heard you could just fly right in pretty easily with eagles so get wrecked in the books they make it clear that the eagles just don't they're not going to be a bus service they're not to be tamed well and people have highlighted too that um imagine they just get shot down that's the whole mission over we did fight you quickly if you bring them down I do like the idea, though, in some crazy alternate world, they, they gave the ring to Tom Bombadil and he just kind of tottered into Mordor and, like, dumped it into Mount Doom. <laughs> yeah. didn't give a shit. It was purely accidental. Yeah, he's just like, ah, this is he's fun. like, oh. They have a summer home in Mordor. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's a big pool party. This, 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 we're about to get such a great scene and it was taken away from us originally. That is unbelievable. <laughs> it is actually <laughs> unbelievable. Cruel. Cruel and unusual. Because yeah. <laughs> on the one hand, I understand that presenting a four-hour th film theatrically... Wow. Presenting a four-hour film theatrically... There's a wizard to manage here locked in his tower. And there Saruman must remain. I get it, but like, yeah, yeah, why yeah. would you? Why? I still remember it was because it frustrated me so much. The theatrical version, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they have this conversation. Under your guard, Tribune, is no power anymore. The filth of Saruman. And then it cuts hard to Treebeard saying the filth of Saruman is washing away. It, it, like, which is at the end of the big Saruman scene. And I remember seeing the extent of being like, what the fuck did you do? Why, why did, what, what, what happened to that? Is him included? Did he turn into like mist or something? Or did he burn yeah. in the sunlight? Like what happened? No, young rascals! A merry hunt of us on and now we find you! And then, you know, finding out that Christopher okay. Lee didn't know that, that that was the case until he saw it in the cinemas as well, which sucks. That does suck. That would have been really shit for him to say that. Well, it was the core of what damaged their relationship as well, right? I mean, I understand that. <laughs> like, being a part of Lord of the Rings, but then the ending for your character is cut out. The salted pork is particularly good. Salted pork. Movie making. It's magic.
Yeah. From yeah, this. Movie. And it takes away Theoden's one of his It's so best good for so many fucking... characters. Be careful. Even a defeat, Saruman is dangerous. In the book. It, it's it's Grima Wormtongue's resolution too. Yep. That big what if of what if Grima didn't die there here? Are... What is his redemption arc look like? You have fought many wars and slain many men, Theoden King, and made peace afterwards. What there is, are what I would what call happens? good scenes that I would remove before this one. Mm -hmm. Yes. This one like, is, this was the biggest, it's, this was the worst decision. <laughs> like, this was the worst <laughs> one in terms of a scene to remove. They may not take counsel together as we once did, my old friend. Imagine cutting out anything that has Chris Foley in it. He looks all haggardly and yeah. you know, weaker now. We shall have peace when you answer for the burning of the West Westfold. Oh, he's so fucking pissed and bitter about, like, stupid Gandalf, like, <laughs> he fucking replaced Ruined me. Ruined my plans. So you have come here for information. Oh yeah, because the Palantir doesn't really have a cause and effect line it's... as well in the theatrical version. Because you're like, oh, it's just there. It's just all, because he picks it up from they the... They just sort of have it, yeah, he just picks it up. Yeah, he just, it's just in the water. Something festers in the heart of Middle-earth. Something that you have failed to see. They must have Which known they like, were cutting it. Like, it's oh, weird, weird that it's in the water if it was in his study, you know? Yeah. Like, why would that be in the water? The original cut for this was apparently four and a quarter hours, right? Imagine having that and then being told you have to get it down to, like, you know, theatrical length. It's gonna be one of those painful things. And then you release the special editions and no. I wonder what happens if he just said no. Anymore. Well, I guess he'd be in legal trouble if he just said no. <laughs> His Justice League was a uh, two-hour mandate, right? The mandate was two hours. Yeah. And then just the Marvels as a recent example, recent ish anyway, of like the destruction of a timeline, time code. It's Holy crazy way. seeing uh, how good Joss was able to make a movie like Serenity in only two hours, but then he just could not salvage. <laughs> Zack Snyder's no. fuck up. I'm, I'm happy to put blame on him somewhat. Like some of the stuff in the Joss. He shouldn't have taken the job. Cringe. Well, he wanted Batgirl, right? That was the idea. <laughs> a lot of this was cut from the theatrical. Yeah, yeah, Gothmar her fight with Gothmar was, was definitely cut, yeah. Oh, fuck, dude. The mouth of Sauron scene. When I saw that for the first time, I was like, what the hell? Like, yeah. this, <laughs> this is a thing that exists? I had no idea. This in is fact, like reaching yeah. into your I remember and finding a one hundred dollar bill you didn't know it was in there. You're like, I, I hit this is the thing. There's I more. Him in um, the Return of the King game, the Mouth of Sauron. I was like, what the fuck is this based on? Because uh, it was Maybe before the, the extended. Or yeah. It wasn't on the book. I. The Eye of Sauron. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the visual well, is based the, on a description, right? Yeah, because in the, uh, Frodo sees it in the mirror, uh, Galadriel's, what does it call it? The mirror to Galadriel? No, that's not what it's called, is it? Oh, uh, that's Galadriel's bathwater. Yeah, it's really, it's really fucking good. He stole yeah, it well, online. Well, yeah, he sees it in that scene, and then they just repurposed that visual and used it to make a physical presence for him in the movie. We can give Frodo his chance if we keep Sauron's eye fixed upon us. I think it was even in the animated version. Like an eye on a tower? I, I'd have to see. Yeah, no, well, an eye, not on a tower, but I think even in the animated version, there was... Well, the eyes on the book, I'd have to see it again. Cover the book. I'd be quite curious to see it again, because it's been so long. Yeah. There is light and beauty up there that no shadow can touch. That's such a nice little part of this movie. Not in the theatrical, mm -hmm. as far as I remember. But which it's in the real version, never, so... Yeah, which is why you should never fucking watch the theatrical version. Which uh, is why you should I, never I support theaters ever. I was gonna say, I haven't seen the theatrical in so long, but I still, like, I'm just perpetually mad that they removed <laughs> so many good scenes Was there from someone it. over there enjoying Starlight? Because the, the reality is that that was the one that loads of people saw it. It's like, they didn't get to see the full thing. Well, that's why, like, the whole prevalent the time, thing, at least now, is you have to see the, you know, the proper versions. Yeah. yeah, the theatricals were still good, but you got that bonus of, you know, when, uh, when right around, it was before Christmas yeah, time. Yeah, the theatrical DVD, yeah. movies are like the roast chicken, but the extended editions are like the roast chicken with Samwise Gamgee's 11 Herbs and Spices. Even Frodo agrees, it is precious. Is it Frodo? And one could <laughs> argue that if they released the extended cuts originally, they would have made just as much money. People would have fucking had. You want to you want to test that, don't you? Time. Like release those fuckers, release a four hour movie into the cinema, do it. No intermission. Well, I think it. I think it well, that, literally was the... so that they could get more showings. 
Yeah, you'd have like almost like what half the showings that you could per day because of the sheer length. Don't even People care. would watch them. This ain't no the Marvels. You can fill everything everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> More than ten people will be in those theaters. This or is it snowed Marvel. in other countries? The Captain Marvel too. A bunch of people watched that Avatar movie. That was pretty long. I don't remember a damn thing about it. Nobody remembers but, it. Nobody, nobody does. I only remember the funny nobody bits. There was water. I remember the funny bit. Time to start uh, rolling out all them people's complaints about too many endings. I don't... Uh, it is so, almost it's only... It's basically it's... 20 minutes on the dot to wrap it's... up what is, what, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hours yeah, yeah. worth of content, and you get 20 minutes of wrap up? If anything, it's swift. If anything, it's like not even a third as long as the endings in the book actually are. It's just bad criticism. It always comes with like just uh, it's it's based on intuition. It's not at all based on like an argument. There's no assessment the of anything that's superfluous or repeated. It's just it's just too long. It's too long. I just it, don't it's... get the intuition though. It's like it's been pointed out. This is like 10 hours of story. The idea that yeah. 20 minutes of ending is too Even if long it was absurd. just The Return of the King, this is a four hour movie and you get a 20, exactly. hour, a 20 minute ending? Because, like, yeah, that, that sounds about right. still feels like a good ratio, it? yeah. But again, that's kind of the point. It's, like, it's not even a good argument on its own, right? Because it should be what's in the ending, what's in the content. And, and yeah, like, yeah. what really can you cut out? Because you need to have all these character moments. This is the end Absolutely. of the, their stories individually. You need closure. There's a lot of endings and they're all good, but this is the best one. I don't know. I I kind of like. Well, but the, okay, Frodo but getting on the boat and it's. I think it's it's a bit of a mistake yeah. to call them all endings as opposed to like that's the end <laughs> yeah, yeah. of Lord of the Rings. Now we have aftermath that relates to like leading us off into what the future of the story would be, or at least. I mean, that's it's pretty consistent with the book. That's what I mean, though. It's like it's right. they're, they're yeah. very purposeful. They all serve different things. That that moment there feels like the end to the story of the Lord of the Rings. This feels like this is uh, the epilogue. Well, that's things the end to... of the plot. This is still the story continuing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Like exactly. that's the end of the adventure. The adventure's done. This is settling back in. And it's been so long since we've seen the Shire, and it's so nice to be back. Yes. The quaint I, I like how it looks people. almost ethereal. Like it doesn't look it real does. compared has... to everything that we been through not scoured we possibly considered a hobbits kill people possibly know, considered right? a controversial <laughs> choice but still like i've not been convinced anytime i hear about it that this film would have improved with the scouring put at this point uh ian holm legend oh, missed yeah. that guy Absolute. so much i think i'm quite ready for another adventure when he says that line i like legitimately oh Oh fucking hell! I mentioned this in early in earlier on in this very long episode that <laughs> I adore the BBC radio drama. I I've think heard it's, it's really good. Yeah. yeah, fucking magnificent. He plays Frodo and Bill. Uh, Bill Nye plays Nye? Uh, not the song. Bill Nye, Nye, Nye is, not, yeah, not, yeah, plays uh, Sam. Oh yeah. really? That's awesome. Do not sad. Do not weep. For not all tears. Who yep. plays Teleporno? Oh, I don't know. He's in it, though. Is he safe? Is he all right? 